Hello and welcome to Adikimi's YouTube channel and editorial discussion for 1st May 2022. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss two editorials, one from The Hindu and the other from Indian Express, both of them speaking about the issue of imposition of Hindi language as the national language and Hindi being used as the language for interstate communication. We will understand the advantages and issues of uh, both the sides and if you like this initiative, share some love through likes, comments and shares. Let's discuss. The editorial begins by saying that India is a country of huge linguistic diversity and linguistic pluralism. A simple example of this is state of Nagaland itself having a population of around 25 lakh but speaking multiple languages like Form, Zeliang, Chang, Nepali, Konyak, Ao, Angami, Emo and there are popular languages like Bengali, Hindi and English as well. Now are we able to conserve all the languages being, being spoken? No. And this is the reason that many of the mother tongues have become invisible in the country. In fact, 1971 census data itself categorizes all the linguistic data in two categories. One category talks about the eight, eight scheduled languages which are 22 in number, so given priority and the other is the languages which are spoken by more than 10,000 people, they will be acknowledged here. And there would be a third category which would speak about other languages, others. And this would be the one in which all those languages are mentioned where there are speakers less than 10,000. This stepmotherly treatment itself speaks about the state of affairs of language and linguistic diversity in the country and possibly the reason why languages are becoming invisible in the country. Lately, Minister of Home has also urged using Hindi as the language for interstate communication rather than a foreign language English. It has created uproar amongst those people who do not speak Hindi and therefore let us understand what is the status of uh, Hindi speakers and Hindi in the country. Now, the editorial itself says that in Hindi, there are as many as 52 crore persons in India who are speaking Hindi as mother tongue. This is a part of census 2011 data itself. Now, uh, and therefore possibly because many Indians, most Indians are speaking Hindi as the mother tongue, let us use this as the language for interstate communication and national language. However, the critiques say that this Hindi that we are speaking of is not just Hindi. This is many other allied languages in the Hindi speaking belt which, which do subsume languages like Bhojpuri which has 5 crore speakers and other languages like Rajasthani, Haryanvi, Chhattisgadi and other states which are speaking similar languages have similar origin like, like languages in Mad Madhya Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand etc. And we are counting all of them in Hindi language itself and calling it to be 50 crore. 2 crore. There is a valid criticism of uh, Hindi having been touted as the most widely spoken language in India and having the maximum growth. Maximum growth. If we see Hindi has grown over 160% times in the number of speakers. This is possibly because we are also including all the other uh, people who are uh, speaking this language. right? All the other people speaking allied languages. Now, Hindi therefore is not the mother tongue of around 70% Indians. And Hindi is therefore not also the lingua franca, the language spoken around all the country. Yes, this is absolutely true that Hindi is is primus inter pares. That means it is first among the equals. Just like Prime Minister is the first amongst the other council of ministers, Hindi is the language which gets preference over all the other Indian languages. That is absolutely true. And imagine, the editorial itself says, imagine India having uh, one, one, one country and one language policy. The language of Hindi being spoken in the north, in the east, in the center, in the west and in the south as well. Will it have everything same as same in all parts? No. Just like in English has a US variation and a UK variation and a Tamil variation and a Gujarati and a Bihari variation. Similarly, Hindi will also have a huge number of dialects. Therefore, what is the use of modifying, um, uh, you know, or, or, or having a single language being spoken, which has multiple dialects and modifications? Why not uh, appreciate the linguistic diversity in the country, right? So, it goes on to say that, um, see, the number of speakers of Hindi may seem to be high. And if it can be very well seen in the dark maroon uh, part of the India's uh, image. Over 90% of speakers of Hindi in these areas, 90% people in these states are speaking Hindi as one of the languages, as an important language. And see, Maharashtra also, 50% speaking Hindi. Karnatak, 12% Kerala. But then this is not the complete picture. This language being spoken here does not mean this is the primary language of the people. Uh, every state could have one, two or three languages being spoken. One as the primary language and then we can also adopt secondary and other languages for the state. So, there are states which have adopted uh, say Tamil as the first language and English as the second language rather than Hindi. 
these are the proportion of speakers in that particular state who can ably speak Hindi. But if you actually speak of the people with mother tongue in that state, look at the situation in Maharashtra itself. 13% people in Maharashtra speaking Hindi as their mother tongue. And less than 0.5%, less than 1% of speakers uh, in Tamil Nadu and Kerala speaking Hindi as their mother tongue. But then number of speakers are definitely more. That's absolutely true. Now, the point is to be mentioned here is that, that there is a first language, primary language, and then secondly, and other languages also spoken in the state. Many of the South and Northeast states have picked up English as the second language rather than Hindi as the second language because they find this to be more lucrative for developmental opportunities around the whole world. So, let's understand quickly what is the proportion of people speaking Hindi and English as the primary language or as the one of the important one, first three languages. So, Hindi, Hindi is the language which is spoken as major language throughout the whole country. Around 57% population speaking Hindi as first, second or third languages. So, people know Hindi, that is true. Second language which is being spoken widely around the whole uh, country is English with 10% of population. But yes, people speaking English as mother tongue is very less. This is not the complete picture. English speaking people with second language is 8 crore amongst many of the people in North, Northeast and South. Right? And then third is Bengali. So you can very well relate as to the language which could be used as the language for interstate communication. The hints are enough. You should understand about the uh, linguistic diversity of the country and also having, having a look at the uh, speakers of the mother tongue. Hindi is the one which has maximum speakers, 52 crore, followed by Bengali, 10 crore and after that Marathi and Telugu which are spoken by around 8 crore people in the country. All right. Now there are innumerable examples from around the world itself and our neighbor not going very far, our neighbor uh, Pakistan had two parts, West and East Pakistan and then we saw when West Pakistan started to impose Urdu on the East Pakistan Bengali speaking population, there was a Bengali nationalism and it resulted in two factions of the country and a new crea creation of a new country itself. It was a disaster for the whole country. In fact, Pakistan, West Pakistan had lesser population around 6 crore and uh, East Pakistan had more population and yet they were imposing the language, Urdu language amongst all the people even in East Pakistan. This is not uh, logic. Similarly, Sinhala language was being imposed uh, in, uh, in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, uh, around 70% speakers are uh, Sinhala language speakers and 30% pe people speak the minority languages. For example, the Indian Tamils, the Sri Lankan Tamils and minority Muslims etc. Many of them speak uh, the uh, language of uh, uh, Tamil. And, and imposing Sinhala, replacing Sinhala as the language for communication rather than English, that was a very bad move and it led to the complete fallout of the country, civil war. See, many countries around the subcontinent are monthly multi-ethnic. There are many ethnicities and multilinguistics, and we must be able to appreciate this. This similar example is that of Singapore itself, a very developed uh, nation state city-state and uh, this is where Singapore after having its indigenous administration uh, under Lee Kuan Yew, he was the uh, one of the important founders of the whole uh, modern Singapore, he was under huge pressure to have uh, Chinese as the uh, Singaporean language. There was, uh, there was uh, this pressure from Chinese uh, trading group that Chinese should be the first language of Singapore. But then he said, what about the Indians there? What about uh, the Malay population, population from Malaysia? All these people are the people with diversity. And therefore, he said that we will have English as the first language for the country. You may have the other languages, we will respect them as well. But English as the first language of country. Similarly, South Africa, a country in South of Africa being regarded as the model for growth of the whole Africa. Now, here, the national anthem has language composition, lyrical, lyrical composition from five different languages. So, uh, the, the five languages include Africana and uh, English as well. So, this is what should be the ideal for India as well. The conversation in India, discussion should be about how should we, we promote the, the study of language structurally and systematically and promote quality learning in all the languages as much as possible rather than, rather than what language should be the national language, right? In this regard, mention five ways 
of national integration and maintaining harmony in cultural diversity of India. This is a sensitive topic. There are many opinions, but a standard opinion respecting the diversity, understanding if uh, a Punjabi is put in uh, Tamil Nadu as uh, IS officer or or a Gujarati is put in the northeast state of uh, Mizoram as a, a, an IAPS officer, how would they be able to tackle the situation? We have to be practical, we have to be sensitive to people and we have to understand the constitution values along with maintaining the diversity amidst unity in the country. In this regard, try and answering this question. Do not be uh, sensitive about uh, uh, one's personal values, but about the constitutional values more than anything. And if you like this initiative, share some love through likes, comments and shares. And if you have got questions, please put it down in the comment section. We will ensure to get back. Thank you for watching.